Okay. Today is Tuesday, August 10th, 2021 at 6 p.m. This is the Hanson Board of Selectmen's meeting uh, being televised and broadcast through cable access television. Uh, please join with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Kemet, do you mind reading this week's announcements? Oh, it would be my pleasure, Mr. <laughs> Dyer. Um, we are looking for two citizens at large to become members of the newly revitalized bylaw review committee. I'm trying to make this sound as exciting as possible. <laughs> um, volunteer applications may be found on the town website, www.hanson-ma.gov, or by calling Greer in the Selectman's Office at 781 293 2131. Volunteers are also needed on the following committees. Facebook Upkeep Committee, Capital Improvement Committee, Conservation Commission, Cultural Council, Disabilities, Highway Building Committee, Historical Commission, Memorial Day Patriotic Observance, Memorial Field Trustees, and Nathaniel Thomas Mill Committee. Upcoming meetings, Board of Selectmen, August 24th, 2021 at 6 p.m. and Board of Selectmen, August 31st, 2021 at 6 p.m. Great, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Kemet. Uh, one thing that I will want to add to the announcements is the uh, school committee next Wednesday, not tomorrow, but the 18th, um, they are unveiling their vision for the education at Whitman Hanson Regional High School, and uh, that might be a posted meeting as well um, if we want to be there um, to hear what they have to say and what they envision for our kids for the future. Um, any questions, Mr. Mitchell? Oh, okay, I just saw your hand. Oh, no, sorry. That's okay. Um, all right, first item on tonight's agenda is to uh, vote to appoint interim town administrator um, as the official applicant for and uh, recipient of the CARES Act funds. Um, Ms. Green? Yes, um, Mr. Selectman and Vice Chair and members of the board, Mr. Chair. Um, I received a call from Tom O'Brien from the Plymouth County CARES Act Commission, um, and Although the prior town administrator had been submitting the CARES Act funds and then receiving the check, um, they need specifically this particular language um, to be voted on by the selectmen to make every, all the formalities um, in check with what they require. That's why this is on the agenda today. Great. Thank you very much. Um, so with that being said, um, do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Great. Uh, moving on to our next item is to vote to authorize the 200th anniversary committee to use McQuant Elementary School for a five-hour carnival on October 2nd, 2021. And we have the chair of the 200th anniversary committee uh, with fine. us tonight, Ms. Flanagan. Do you mind just coming up to the podium um, so folks at home can hear what you have to say? So um, we're, we're having the event on October 2nd, which you voted on um, a few weeks ago for the use of the town hall. Um, and we're hoping to have a carnival for, it's a five hour carnival, um, probably like 11 to four during the day. Um, our plan is to start a parade from um, the middle school and parade up to the town hall, pick up the time capsule, which is buried out front, and then, you know, bring ceremoniously up to um, Indian Head uh, where um, there's more room for people to gather and you know um, the parade has a, a big enough place to stop um, and then have you know carnival happening at Maquan and have you know some food trucks um, some local music um, I've talked to Laura about maybe having some of the businesses there um, so that's kind of our plan for October 2nd. So it would start in the morning and then the, the carnival would end it, you know, at four o'clock. But the carnival would be there from 11 to four. All right, great. Um, I have uh, two questions yep. for you uh, for a rain date. Is this rain or shine? We do, yes, it is rain or shine. Okay. We don't have a rain date Perfect. selected yet. Perfect. And how about a COVID date? We don't have a COVID date either. But I believe in the contract, I didn't, I forgot my glasses, but I believe in the contract, we have until like six o'clock in the morning, the day of, to make a decision um, on whether or not they'll come, the, the North American 
um, amusement because he knows that weather can impact um, you know the day but once once we say we're going and they they come we're in it for you know the full amount of the day now do they set up that day you're saying so they said <coughs> he would want to come up on Friday night Friday afternoon and set up the swing because it's their biggest piece but then they would come in the morning and set up the rest of the um, activities. okay and that's going to be at the McQuan yep Okay, um, the reason I'm asking, Kenny, remember when you were going to have that f that thing before and yes. the school got a little bit freaked out because they were going to have MCAS and right. they were going to have some test pre-testing and stuff mm -hmm. like that? Just out of an abundance of caution, mm -hmm. can you double-check with the Indian Head School that sure. they don't have anything going yeah. on that that would be a distraction for? Okay, okay. Just to just, to yeah. just avoid it. We could probably you know. let them know. Like, you can't set up any until, you after know, this school. time. Yeah, yeah after yeah. school on yeah, Friday. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But I am trying to get a hold of the field. I don't know who manages the fields. I reached out to the um, person. I, Oxen Fields. Oxen Fields, well, which is no, for Indian Head. For oh. the use of Indian Head. I had to fill out an application, a field usage application, last oh. year for the events that we were having last year. And it was with the, the school committee. But I reached out, and I haven't heard back. Ernie from Sandlin, um, the facilities director, usually it's his admin that okay. does it. But So if you reach out to Ernie, he'll put you in okay. touch with the right person. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, Cuz yeah, I know there's an application that I'll yes. have to fill out to use Indian yep. Head for Saturday. Yeah. Yep. This is exciting. We haven't had a carnival for like so many years. I'm wildly excited about it. <laughs> um, any other questions from the board? Yep, you answered one of mine, rain date. That was the only question yeah. I yeah, had. We yeah, we haven't I mean, I we we may come up with a rain date, but we just haven't talked about it. Um, because the weekend after that is Columbus Day weekend. Um, and I think there was something else the weekend before that interfered with, with us. So we really just haven't pinpointed a rain date if we're going to Now, do one. we get charged and or will there be any money made that the 200th anniversary might get part of? So we, we talked about this being a free event. We wanted it to be free um, to the town. But he, um, the man from North American Amusement, strongly advised against that he said that it kind of gets chaotic when it's a free event you know parents throw their kids over the gate and he just said oh, it just becomes like you know closing time and there's like a mile long line yeah. and, and so he said it, it you lose a lot of control um so we had thought about maybe um having like a dollars for scholars or the food pantry and i asked lisa this question i haven't heard back i assume she's oh. waiting for um uh, no, I, I actually sent you an email this afternoon. Oh, you did? Okay. Yes, All right, I left question. early to take the dog yeah. to bed. So. <laughs> um, so we were hoping that we could have, like, one of those groups run the ticket booth and then just keep keep the money for them. But what, you can certainly do we that. We can do that. Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, that's what we plan to do. I mean, we can make the ticket prices whatever we want. It's a flat fee that we pay North American Amusement, so they're not looking to make money on the ticket sales. Um, and they, pro but they do provide the tickets to us, um, so that you know we're using their tickets and not like red ticket that anybody can run to Dollar Tree and grab and stuff like that. So, yeah, I like the idea of making it affordable, but mm -hmm. I agree if it was yeah. free, it would be paid for <coughs> right. Um, but you don't want to exclude people because of economic stuff. So, right. you know, yep. I'm sure you guys will reach the right. Yep. You know. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. So uh, for those at home that uh, just perked up when they heard Carnival, it's going to be on October 2nd, 20, uh, October 2nd, 2021 from 11 to 4 p.m. up at McQuan, um, if approved by the Board of Selectmen. So do I hear a motion? So well, moved. Yeah. Oh, so second. Um, I, we already approved the, um, we already approved her usage. Okay. Are we just approving the Carnival or? I don't I think guess. you approved the usage of McQuan. You approved the usage of the Town Hall. Oh, but not McQuan. All right, well, it's moved yeah. and seconded. So. All right, moved and yeah. seconded. Uh, all in favor? Four-row. So, and the next item on the agenda is to vote to authorize the Holiday Committee to hold the Holiday Festival tree lighting on December 4th, 2021 at the Hanson Town Green. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Four-row. Um, next. I just mention that yeah. I would like to thank Audrey in the 200th anniversary committee because I feel like you're a little beacon of hope in an otherwise semi bleak year mm -hmm. um, to just try to get the community together and kind of get some like you know stuff going and and I know you're going to be conscientious about COVID and we'll keep that in mind but I do just want to thank everybody um, 
So I just yes. didn't. I no, didn't no, want. No, I just absolutely. didn't want to Thank recognize you. Thank that. You. Um, so, uh, with that being said, uh, moving on to the next item, uh, to vote to authorize Attorney William Solomon to represent the town with the Comcast cable license renewal process. Um, Ms. Green. Uh, yes. So, uh, Attorney Solomon has represented the town in the past with the Comcast um, licensing, and he reached out to us and asked if we would like to receive a proposal for his services. Obviously, yes, we would, since he's already helped the town with that prior. Um, this process does start three years prior to the ex expiration of the license. So we do have a um, proposal here from him that would include all the services and something that he does too. He reviews all of the past um, invoices and, and money that is owed to the town, and he does find money um, that Towns um, have not been paid properly by Comcast. So um, he did find a, a significant amount <coughs> in some of our neighboring towns. So um, we do have a uh, contract we hear with him, his, his uh, hourly rate, and just looking for a vote to go ahead and uh, bring him on so he can begin the process, uh -huh. even though it's three years down the line. <laughs> Second. <laughs> We've been seconded. Uh, any discussion from the board? Yeah, we've been using him for a while. Yeah. So uh, with that being said, uh, we have a mo motion on the floor. Uh, all in favor? Four row. Uh, right. So uh, discuss uh, re uh, Whitman Hanson Regional School District's request to remove uh, six Renani uh, ta water, uh, tankless water heaters from McQuan School and relocate them to the Indian uh, Head and the Middle School. Um, do you have any information on that? Yes, Ms. Green? so this was a request from Ernie Sandlin. Uh, he had requested that permission because the uh, six tankless water heaters, the Renais, are just sitting at the, the McQuan School, not being utilized. And when water tanks sit for a long period of time, they start to degenerate and things like that. So um, he asked for permission to remove those water heaters, or six of them, and bring three over to Indian Head and three over to the, hot, to the middle school to just help increase the hot water capacity of both the schools, um, rather than having them sit there and then kind of go to waste. Um, second. Moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Four row. Uh, next item, item four on the iPad, is going to be appoint election workers, expiration August 15th, 2022. Um, this is uh, just regular housekeeping uh, that came from our town clerk. Um, so with that being said. Um, so moved. Moved. Second. And seconded. All in favor? 4-0. Uh, and the next item will be um, to accept the resignation of uh, Emmer McDonald as a member of the Hanson Board of Assessors. With regret, um, so moved, and I think Amherst Second. served for quite a number of years, I believe. Um, so, um, um, yeah. Perfect. Excellent. Moved and seconded. All in favor? With regret, 4 row. And um, what will be the, that's an elected position, mm -hmm. um, so what will be the process to replace her? Because that's a small board. So they are um, looking for a volunteer to fill that position until the end of the term, at which time hopefully somebody will run for the position. So if they get a volunteer, will it be the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Assessors jointly appointing as we've done for like water commissioner and other different positions that it's, were elected? It's yes. very likely that um, Lee Gamash has reached out to someone who works in an assessing office in yep. Hanover. And she said that person is very interested. They just have to file the paperwork. So mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. might have them at your next meeting and, yes. and bring awesome. the assessors in. Yeah. Great. Great. There, thanks, Ms. Uh, Getson. Um, so with that being said, moving on to the next item. I don't think item. we actually, oh, it was moved and seconded. Oh, moved and seconded. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? 4-0 with regret. Um, so so item six is to discuss fire chief's request for a town debit card to make um, purchases. Um, so I talked to chief uh, last night um, and he said that in the past they've had store cards where they were able to go and purchasing, purchase things at uh, Walmart or CVS or Shaw's or wherever they need to go purchase supplies. But a lot of the facilities now or a lot of the corporations are no longer doing these kind of cards. So um, 
you know, obviously he, you know, the, this is more for just emergency purchases. He was saying last night um, was sometimes they have to have to run over to Shaw's and make sure they get more gloves or whatever until the next order comes. So, um, so with that being said, um, am I missing anything, Ms. Green? So um, actually, he did um, update the request, and it would be for emergencies, but also for non-emergencies okay. as well. Um, but also there will be a limit on this and it will be monitored by the town accountant and treasurer collector um, And also the police have also put in a request for a similar debit card um, Are we going to have highway doing the same and the clerical union doing the same? Are we setting some type of weird precedence here? I, I recognize Jerry's going to need stuff and I don't want him guys his guys having to pay out of pocket or somebody having to put it on their personal credit card and get reimbursed That's not the way we should be rolling um, right. Uh, well, the police chief did note that he pays for um, a GoDaddy type of um, website, website yeah. on his personal card. So that's one of the purchase that one of the items that he would actually use his debit card for. Um, and again, I'm going to bring each request to the board, the treasurer collector and the, the town accountant and get their thoughts on each request. So that's why I feel it's the will of the board um, to decide on this request. Uh, was saying with that being said um, I, I when I was also talking to the chief there were sometimes incidences where you know uh, the fire department uh, not the high, uh, the highway department would have to go and get something they would borrow the card or whatever so I think it might be a good practice now just to have it seeing how a lot of the stores are no longer allowing these store cards to be set up um, but I, with that being said it's just one of these things where I think it's only the department heads that could use them and that we should have a policy in place um, so that it's not, oh, whoops, I didn't realize that. And I'm not saying that because I think very highly of all our department heads. Yes. Um, but, I'm, I mean, I don't want it to see, oh, give it to the seasonal worker, go down to Shaw's. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm also grabbing a bottle of Coke. But just yeah. making sure that these policies are set up um, and go from there. What's the limit on this? What's the? It'll be a $5,000 limit. Oh, okay. On the, on the cards. Mr. Hickey, I see you're thinking. Well, I'm just thinking what Laura said, you know, and now Lisa had said the police, and I, I don't want to look like, uh, obviously everybody knows what their job is and what they're doing and what supplies they need, um, but, um, you know, how, how many cards are there going to be? Or is it one card for everyone? And if it is an emergency, and uh, you know, I'll uh, I'll I'll pick on um, on Jerry because this this is how you know Jerry brought this up um, for Lisa to hold the card and oversee the use of the card, even though it's going to be you know with the town accountant, and it's not like Lisa can say you know yes or no, whatever. But it's just one card for all the departments. So that if Jerry does need something at CVS, he can come to town hall, get the card, and go to CVS and purchase whatever. But what if it's an emergency I, at night or something? Yeah. Like? I disagree well, a little bit, Jim, just okay. because that's just a pain. You know, and, and but if she's not but here, if they, if they run out, if he gets a call from a lieutenant and run out of gloves and it's a Saturday, he would have to wait until Monday. I think that we have trustworthy department heads that handle their budget and giving them a card. It's convenience. Right. They're not buying stuff for their their personal use. They're buying stuff for their departments. So. Right. And and I do get yeah. that. Yeah. So I, I mean I think that but if, if we don't money, trust our department heads with a credit card, then we've got bigger issues. Right. And that's true. But if Jerry runs out of gloves on a Saturday, um, he better not run out of gloves well, on that, a Saturday because the maybe not a good example. Better be taken. <laughs> I mean I was just, you know, looking no, for No, I, a I see what you're saying. Like I, I'm a like, I, and I'm with you. I trust these guys. Like, obviously, they're in a, they're in these jobs because we trust them and we right. know that they're professionals. Um, so that comes with a certain amount of of, uh, of street cred. Um, but I, I think, you know, what I am concerned about, five thousand sort of caught me a little off guard. I, I don't know what I was thinking a thousand or like some, you know. And, and since it's new, I'm just sort of like, wow, five thousand right out of the gate. Like, how do we know if this is going to work? And it's new, and we kind of need some. Like, I know you say and Todd's going to check it, but Todd's only in every Tuesday, and he's only one guy who's a miracle worker as it is. Um, so we've got to have some trust and faith in them, and I do, but I'm just trying to figure out what are the checks and balances. So, well, maybe, maybe that's what we have to say tonight is maybe if you do use your debit card, 
to go and purchase whatever it is, you bring the receipt. Oh yeah, and, and you, you bring a, up and you bring receipts. a form, and yep. you hand it in the next business day for the town administrator to initial off on. Right. And and our treasurer collector as well is going to be part of the team. Um, she has been in touch with the bank and has gotten all the um, information on getting these debit cards. Um, so she's taken the she's taken the first steps to talk to the bank about getting these cards. So and right so now, um, through you, Mr. Chair, right sure. now currently they have to spend the money out of their pocket. Right. and get reimbursed. Yes. Like, I know for a fact that the police chief puts things on his personal credit card. Yes. But the problem with that is when you get reimbursed, they don't pay you back the sales tax mm -hmm. because towns are exempt right. from sales tax. If Chief Mix goes to a store mm -hmm. to buy something, he Plus, has that's to pay the hassle. sales tax. That's ridiculous. Then yeah. he has to get yeah. reimbursed. They don't pay him the sales tax. I bet half the time it's if it's just, something that's small, he's just like, whatever, uh, I'll so pay So I, I think this is something yeah. that we should approve and you know would do checks and balances i don't think we need to put limits i think we it's convenience that's yeah. all it is so we'll make sure that it, it's monitored and safeguarded and yeah is know, it going to be a five thousand for everybody i believe so i believe so I, I can certainly ask gene to lower that that amount well i'm just curious like what are other we can't be the first town to do this right i mean like we're very seldom Probably cutting edge here in Hanson. Uh, <laughs> to be honest, we're very lot. seldom. We're usually very late adopters. Um, so I'm just wondering, like, what do other towns do? Like, what are the processes? I don't have a problem with it, but I just want an I want to, an assurance from you that the financial team is going to put in good checks and balances, and maybe that we would think about a lower dollar amount for our departments other than fire. Like fire, that's a safety emergency thing. If Jerry's guys need equipment, I don't want to have any impediment to them getting it. Um, but the other guys, uh, you know, I, 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 I think maybe less so. Okay. We have a standardized uh, employee reimbursement form. Lisa has to sign off on that. Mm -hmm. So similarly, we could, re we could create one that Lisa has to sign on. That way she's, you know, actively monitoring every Like purchase. reconfigure that to the, for this purpose type mm -hmm. of thing? Exactly. Yeah, yes. Or maybe you do it at the end of the month. Send me um, a spreadsheet of what you used on the card. The card. Something. Yeah, I don't think I, every right. single time you use the card, you got to run the town hall and bring a receipt. Right. Exactly. You know. All right. So just to be clear, who we're saying Jerry for purposes and, and uh, Chief Mix. Mm -hmm. um, so Chief Thompson and Chief Mix, are we saying anybody else? I would, I would want to include Highway in it, this. The Highway Director. Yes. Okay, Is and are we going to want to say Miss Green? Mm -hmm. Do you have? I don't know. Do, do you guys have stuff that you need to do? Computer. A lot of times they do make us pay up front mm -hmm. for subscriptions, and um, Ryan McGonigal would get and reimburse. That oh, was helpful. Yeah, wasn't that part of the problem that we were having with our Dropbox. pitiful Dropbox. Uh, with the Dropbox, and then with our pitiful um, yeah. Zoom, you know, functionality, mm -hmm. and so, because we didn't. So I think I that th yeah, I think, yeah. That, that, I think that would be the four, and then any of the, the departments that would need access to a card can come through mm -hmm. our office. Yeah, it would just it would just mainly be any type of software because a lot of those times that's that's the only way that they'll accept payment on it. Yeah. Um, which I did with a Zoom account when Ryan left it. We were on the free Zoom account, which didn't work because you yeah. only got a certain yeah. amount of time. I just signed up for a year one and just paid for it on my credit card, and then I filed the paperwork with them to get the sales tax removed, and then I was reimbursed. Um, All right. So just to clarify, a really, thousand dollars for everybody, but five thousand for Jerry. In in the fight, the uh, police chief too. Five thousand for yeah. Chief yeah. Mix and Chief well, Thompson. Yeah, I, I would just do five thousand across the board for, for the across four. Across the board. Just because if yeah. Highway has to go out and purchase a new catch basin, and uh, in the middle of the night if they don't have one, you know, I mean, I'm just saying because. Mm -hmm. I agree. With that. Yeah. Okay. And then, well, is there sure. a way we could get like a little check-in, say like three or four months after this is implemented, just yeah, to see absolutely. like how things are going, and you know? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Because uh, like I said, the team. Treasurer Collector, ta um, our town accountant, and myself will uh, be very active in monitoring this. Are you looking for a vote on that? Yes. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor? 5-0. Uh, uh, thank you, guys. Um, the next item on the agenda is to discuss the venue and the format for October town meeting. Um, we are quickly approaching... Um, October, which is crazy to think, especially with the Halloween candy at Shaw's been being out for a few weeks now. Um, so with that being said, um, I think we're all aware of current events with um, the Delta variant um, 
still prevalent in our society. Um, I think possibly for the October town meeting, we don't want to do it outside because of mosquitoes and Triple E and stuff like that. Um, so I think the best way forward is to kind of do what we have done in the past, maybe up at the high school in mm -hmm. the gym. Mm -hmm. um, I think that has worked well. Um, I wasn't sure what the rest of the board was thinking. Yeah, that's why I had asked to have it on, um, uh, because I just thought if we want to do that, I mean, geez, it seems like you know we've only got like six weeks or right. something, you know. So, and and I thought that that worked out very well. The you know the staff up at the high school socially distanced people. I, we got actually pretty good turnout because I think people felt safe that we were implementing yep. the protocols, but we're getting the town business done. Yep. So I think that's perfect. So, yeah, I agree. And so what we would have to do is send what we did last time is we sent an email to um, Jeff Simonak and also Ernie mm -hmm. securing the date because yeah. Whitman is going to be doing the same thing. And usually Whitman, um, they kind of follow us. They're not typically leaders, but I don't know if they always have an October town meeting in Whitman. Do you guys, Lisa? Uh, no, we didn't always have one. Yeah. I think what we had one in November at one point. So, um, I don't know if they actually are having one this uh, fall or not. So, but good point, though, Ken. So, all right, excellent. So, I don't think we need a vote on that. Um, so, if everyone's in consensus, we'll just kind of shoot for that. And I'm sure uh, Ms. Screen and Ms. Getson will get um, we'll those get dates that. reserved. And in the, the other morning, thing, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Chairman, they're going to ask how many people you expect when you reach out to them. So, you're going to have to give them a number. I don't think, you know, you're not going to have as many people as we did the last town meeting, but. We'll you know, hope for 100. You hope, yeah. We'll hope. At least. <laughs> so, um, and then also with that being said, too, uh, Ms. Green, do you know if uh, state of emergency thresholds are still in place? Because um, I know we need, a, what, is 100 people for quorum? Uh, do you know if the governor has extended uh, stuff I, like I believe when he ended the state of emergency, that ended a lot of the protocols. Um, yeah. So, yeah, but we can, I can certainly check in to see. Yeah, can we reach out MMA to our um, yeah MMA and our state uh, rep and senator just to see if we can kind of get the wheels turning on that? Sure, absolutely. That'd be good. So where you're going with that was the former ability under the state of emergency for us to reduce the quorum just in the event that things really get freaky mm -hmm. and people don't want to attend, but we still have business that Correct. needs to get done. Because if, you, if yep. you recall, I think it was one of the Springtown meetings yes. that we were barely able to get, I think it was 25 people mm -hmm. or Yep. It was something, yep. something small, and that we were barely able to get them. So just to make sure we're able to conduct town business, let's make sure we start covering our bases. Mm -hmm. um, so talking about town meeting, uh, discuss uh, articles collect, uh, collected to date and also citizens' petition. Uh, Ms. Green. Okay. So um, you do have a, a list within your packets that have um, a preliminary inventory of what um, we hope to have on the town meeting this year. Ms. Green, if you don't mind, I'm just going to interject here mm -hmm. just for viewers at home who may not be able to see uh, what is on the website. I just want to quickly run through this. Mm -hmm. um, so Article 1 is requested by the selectmen on paid bills for the year. Article 2, various departments, uh, fiscal year 22, budget, budget transfers. Article 3, school committee reimburse rooftop water coil, coil at Whitman Hanson Regional School District. Article 4, uh, CPC, digitize public records. Article 5 is requested by the selectmen uh, to adopt a sales, uh, uh, adopt a meals sales tax. Article 6, uh, request by the selectmen building improvement inventory. Article 7, by the selectmen, um, a two-year term limit for selectmen. Article 8, uh, selectmen uh, requested McQuan school teardown or long-term lease for senior housing. Article 9, selectmen remove uh, hiring and firing authority of the recreation commissioners. Article 10, from the selectmen, rescind Article uh, 32 of May 5th, 1999, annual town meeting, um, which is the Friday closure at town hall. Um, Article 7, Select, from the selectmen, special legislation to approve one-day liquor licenses. Uh, Article 12, wage and personnel, uh, add Juneteenth, at, Juneteenth as a holiday. Uh, Article 13, wage and personnel classification plan. Article 
14, so by the selectmen, upgrade HVAC at Town Hall. Article 15, Fire Department funding for vacation um, slash sick buyback for retiring fire personnel. Article 16, from the selectmen, residency requirement bylaw for all, appointment vol all appointed volunteers. Article 17, um, requested by the selectmen, installation of sidewalks from High Street to Main Street. So, And um, one additional, um, as well as we will be adding to this, um, to fund all the um, collective bargaining agreements um, at the annual October annual special town meeting, um, hopefully if we were to come to agreements with all the unions. Perfect. Thank you. So, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to share for people at home. Okay. So... Um, can I answer any questions on some of these? Well, um, so we haven't voted yet to place these or whatever. No. Okay. No, this right. is just a preliminary. Because uh, some list. of them, I'm like, we did mm. talk about a two-term limit for selectmen. I personally have been okay with that, but I just never, never remembered us talking about it. No, nope, no, nope, this is just um, a, a draft of what's okay. what's there. These so are things that have just sort of floated by the office, and we've been grabbing them and putting them in. Mm -hmm. Certainly, it's not necessary that um, you're going to sponsor them. Ultimately, they might just get pulled off before we draft the warrant. So, um, can I just yep. so. The, um, and this is a general statement, not just for this one article, but the rooftop water coil at Whitman Hanson Regional School District. Um, I'm wondering, I know that I think part of the agreement is that um, the town picks up anything, I, I don't know, the dollar amount keeps changing. It used to be 5,000, then it was 10,000. I, I don't know what it is, but whatever that dollar amount is. Are we getting an independent sanity check on these um, costs? Um, are, are we just taking the school district's word for it that it's going to be fifteen thousand dollars to put a rooftop water coil on on the? I, I, it seems to me, um, and I, I looking at you as our procurement officer and slash chief cook and bottle wash, um, you know everything. <laughs> but um, you know, but I'm just wondering, um, is there is there an ability for us to say? Um, okay, thanks, you know, um, guys, we know that you need that. We just want to call somebody out and get an independent kicking of the tires that it's going to cost that amount. 15000 isn't a lot, but over the course of the year when you've got four or five, six different little things and they're like ten and 15000 they start to add up in the aggregate. Mm -hmm. and, and I just think we've got a fiduciary duty to make sure that... Um, you know, that the costs are, are, are where they need to be on that. So I, we don't have to decide that tonight, but I just would like to bring that up just overall, not even just that one article. So, so um, generally with Whitman Hansen, um, Ernie Sandlin, who's the facilities director, and actually um, your former town administrator, um, John Stanberg, as the business and finance director, um, they do conduct procurement on, the, on these. Um, normally, they don't send the two towns their procurement files. Um, Ernie has always been very upfront with the costs of it. So, um, I mean, where I came before, we didn't feel the need to check up on it because, with, with again, with their former uh, business director, they always um, conducted the procurement. And actually, I sat in on some of those procurements, so I know they do a good job with it. Um, but we can certainly ask them for their procurement file. Um, Even just some independent verification. I just think if we're writing the check, we've got a responsibility. Even though it's got nothing to do with Ernie or the district or anything, we need to have we need to take responsibility mm -hmm. that if we're writing a check, that we're comfortable with what we're writing the check for. So, um, well, I was going to say maybe is it possible to have Ernie come in or write us a letter of the need. Yeah. Um, exactly. What is it going to be doing and stuff like that? If you can, mm -hmm. if he doesn't mind, just making a quick presentation yep. on it. I think that might be good, just so when we get to town meeting, some people have some education of what it is. Absolutely. So, um, with that being said, um, as uh, Ms. Getson had said, that this is just a draft of what is to come. Um, so if there's any items that the board or committees or any departments would like to see, um, when is the deadline to submit articles? August 24th. August 24th. And I sent a reminder to department heads. 
It's not to boards and committees. All right. Could, do, would you mind just sending out um, to, to board and committees? committees? And, um, may I just um, one one additional item? Yep. Um, so number 16, I had submitted, and I think Mr. Weeks did as well, um, the residency requirement for the um, bylaw for all appointed volunteers, and I think we know why, and I'm not going to get into all of that because uh, it's certainly not without controversy. But um, my, I just want to clarify on that, that there may be a time, and I don't want to paint ourselves into a corner, there may be a time when we've got somebody, and I'm thinking of somebody like a Phil Clemens, mm -hmm, when you've mm -hmm. got somebody like a Phil Clemens who's been serving on the Conservation Commission for eons, and this man has so much institutional knowledge. Now let's say, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sorry I'm picking on Phil, but he's just a good example. Let's say Phil decides he's going to sell his house, or he has to, maybe he's fixing up his house and he needs to temporarily move out of town for a while, or even he's moving out of town permanently, but we still need that institutional knowledge. I'd like to have some proviso in there where the board would make an accept so we would know somebody wasn't a resident, but they have specialized skills that we really need, and we make an exception knowingly that we say, okay, you know what, um, Mr. Clemens, would you please stay on Conservation Commission for, you know, another year till we can find somebody to, you know, I'm making this whole scenario up. I, mm -hmm. As far as I know, Mr. Clemens is here for the duration, and, and he has no intention of leaving. But um, I just don't want to paint ourselves into a corner where we have somebody who we really need and it serves the best interest of Hanson, but we've got this ironclad rule and now we've got no wiggle room. So if you can just kind of like think through that. Yeah, actually, actually um, our neighbor Whitman just passed a bylaw recently um, that addressed actually that exact issue and there is language in there. So I will reach out to the town clerk to get a copy since um, Whitman ha does not have their bylaws online yet. Um, they're working towards that, but I'll reach out to get that language, and also I was going to reach out to Kate as well to see what her thoughts would be for language to allow us that that um, that discretion. Yeah, and again, I, it isn't something like you know, I, I wouldn't envision us saying, oh, we want all kinds of people from out of town on all of our boards of committees. That's not where I'm going. This is on an exception basis with the whole board making a decision, uh, you know, majority vote that type of thing, and I, I don't know how that language works out. And I know that um, Mr. Melissi, and I'm probably not pronouncing his name correctly, um, submitted a citizen's petition, I believe, or attempted to submit a citizen's petition. And I don't think he addressed that little proviso there. Right. So, you know, I'm hoping that this one prevails. So um, great, great segue. So um, with that being said about citizens' petition, if there's anyone at home that would like the town to consider a certain um, article of business, uh, please check in with the town clerk to uh, make sure that you get all the rules and guidelines on how to create a citizens' petition because we don't want to end up in a situation where folks spend all this time on it and then they come and then it's just not valid. It's not in the right format. Um, so with that particular example, uh, Laura, with Mr. Messini? Melissi. Melissi. Mr. M. Mr. Frank. M. Mr. Frank. M. Frank. Yep. Um, so with Mr. Melissi, um, I, we're going to be working with him um, to, I, to make sure that we can square things up for him and okay, help good. him out. Because he did and reach out. He said that Beth had let him know, our town clerk had let him know that he the formatting wasn't what was required. Right. Um, and so... That was one of the, I didn't know that his petition wasn't going to be um, valid or accepted by Beth, and that's her job, and I defer to her. Um, but I just would like us to talk more broadly about citizens' petitions and sort of come up with a, a process, because what I'd like to do is try to find a way to help people so that they don't have this extremely frustrating experience of trying to do what I think is like the most pure form of democracy, which is I've got something I want to change. I'm going to go out and get a bunch of people to sign this petition. And then they meet with the big wall of the glacial municipal issue. A lot of towns have a handout. They, have, they formalized a handout and they give it to people who come in and want citizens' petitions, okay. and they can be anywhere from two pages to 20 pages long. Some are more explanatory in terms of what is a town meeting, what is an article. Some of them are just focused on the citizens' petition, but there are lots of good examples out there. Okay, so Beth has, this, this to me would be very handy if I were going to do. So 
so I guess what I'm saying is if, if somebody comes to our office, um, comes to you ladies and says, I'm interested in a citizen's petition, obviously would we'd refer them to Beth and Beth would walk them through this process. But in the past, we've also run into issues where they follow this process, but it's awkwardly worded or inaccurately worded or illegally worded. And I just want to kind of get a sense like, it seems to me as though it would benefit all of us, including everybody who ends up sitting at town meeting, sitting through somebody presenting a citizen's <coughs> petition, um, to, to possibly, once it gets submitted and Beth says, yep, you know, they use the right format, to see if we can queue it up to town council, or at least to you, Lisa, to take a look at, to make sure that it's worded properly. And in the past, what we've done is we've kind of I don't want to say negotiated, but said, look, you know, that that line there, if you put it in, even if it passes a town meeting, we're not going to be able to do that because you've added wording that hamstrings right. us right. Um, and kind of work through that. So I just kind of wanted to get a sense of, like, you know, how we would handle that going well, forward. That, that would be up to the board. Um, I mean, there was a citizen's petition that came across uh, my, my lap. Um, it was three-plus pages long. And it was it was loaded with legal terms and, and legal use. And I'm just wondering if the board has an appetite to have our town council review these at their hourly rate mm -hmm. for a citizen's petition. Now, I spent time looking at that. And like I said, it, it was complex. Mm -hmm. um, and it, inc it included planning and zoning and restrictions and you know, it took a lot of time to read through that. So, you know, if, if the board, it's, I'm willing to help anybody out. Um, I don't want to steer people in the wrong direction. Sometimes some towns who have a more, uh, I don't know, puffed up uh, legal budget does offer that services to the town, but I don't know if Hanson's in that type of position um, to offer our legal counsel services we have to in the past, I, I wouldn't say offer. Um, I, I like I, I, yeah. I cringe a little um, at the word offer because it seems like we're opening up like, hey, you know, anybody who wants yeah, to use yeah, our town council, yeah. um, draft your citizen's petition and we'll just pass it by legal council. But, um, but I wouldn't say offer, but I think if it gets to the point where people have collected the signatures and, you know, and it's getting legs and it's clearly going to be in the warrant, I think it behooves all of us to make sure that it's language that can be used and is accurate. And like, similar to any article that any board or committee would be submitting, town council takes a little gander at it. And, you know, and if it's, if I guess we'll have to maybe cross the bridge on a case by case basis, because if it's like a complete overhaul of the article and, and something that's got multiple, and, you know, sort of antenna, then yeah, probably we're not gonna wanna spend hundreds and thousands. So one thing to keep in mind too is if, if it does make it through, our town meeting with the vote, it then goes from the to, from the town clerk to the attorney general's office, mm -hmm. who then reviews it for compliance with state laws and things like that. So, even if it makes it all the way through our formalities, the attorney general can always invalidate it, yep. stating that it is not in compliance with state law, and then we kind of they kind of go backwards with it. So m maybe what we should do is have uh, maybe the town clerk come in and maybe yes. just present because yes. I, I think that she might have some more background on it, just to kind of walk us through the whole process on what her recommendation is. Um, after all, I mean, I, I really look at town meeting as her show, yeah, um, and I want to make sure that we're we're making her happy with it. Uh, Mr. Week, uh, well, actually, uh, Ms. Mr. Mitchell had something, and then I'll come to you, Mr. Weeks. So I think if, if a citizen has a um, petition or something potential that they, I think they should reach out to the chairman, send it to you, and let us review it first because if it's something that makes sense they won't have to go through the citizen petition route we can create an article mm -hmm. that's you know if it's if we agree to it but I think having town council available to look at citizens petition I think is bad that's setting um, a precedent that you're gonna have citizen petition all the time and people are just gonna draw them on napkins and submit them and have your town council look at it but there's you know like Frank you know Frank could come to us send you an email and say listen you know, I'm coming up with this, this idea, and if we agree, we can just put on the warrant as an article. You don't have to do an actual citizen petition, as long as they come to us within the time frame and the parameters that we have set 
for a town meeting article. That's what I think people should do. But town council, the offer in town council to residents to look at the stuff, I just think is a bad idea. So, hold on just uh, one second. Um, Mr. Week said his hand up next. But he's going to forget what he has Joe, to say. Joe, if you wouldn't mind yielding the floor to me for just <laughs> one minute, because I, I agree with Kenny, um, and I don't know the point that you're going to make, but if that citizen, and we'll use Frank, doesn't agree with that decision, right. then he can go ahead and do the citizen's Absolutely. Position. But it saves everybody time if right. we agree. If we don't, they can still do it. Right. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I appreciate that. I th so I got two things, two, two points. One's prior and then this one. You know, I, I, I do agree with that. I think, though, if, if someone can't get something on the agenda, for example, then our bylaws allow for people to put these petitions yeah. in place. And if you're going to find 100 plus people to take time out of the day to put their name on something, I think it behooves us as a board Thanks. to try to protect ourselves because I'm thinking worst case scenario, someone just copy and paste some article from years ago. It already meets the compliance because it's already gone through the process. It gets the signatures, town meeting gets stacked, it gets voted through, attorney general can't overturn it because it's legally in compliance with whatever it is. That's a very, very likely scenario that could play out too, circumventing the entire process. So I think, you know, just for the sake of argument, cover all bases. I think first thing is first, submit it, try and get it through, you know, go through the proper channels, but we do have to protect ourselves. So maybe we should kind of have a larger open conversation about the use of town council related to, to these things and maybe set a deadline to the warrant deadline um, so we can try to figure out what makes sense budgetarily because we don't have a, we don't have a large budget. Um, so I think it's just for the sake of protection because I'm thinking worst case, I honestly am thinking worst case scenario, Someone already did the legwork, already spent their own money. They can hire attorneys that can just go right through it too. They can get it right through and, you know, no one's, uh, uh, it, it'll just happen, it'll just happen. Um, so my, my other point was that I wanted to try and add this to the warrant or at least have a conversation about that. Uh, we have a recall law related to elected officials, but we don't have a recall law related to appointed officials. And one of the things I've been trying to get some clarification on is the removal of appointed officials at any given moment. I think it's time we have that conversation for the only reason that if we do end up putting a residency requirement in there, we have no backing, from my understanding, because I haven't gotten clarification on this, to remove it. So what happens if I am an appointed official to the Capital Improvement Committee, which I am, and I buy a house in Pembroke, right? I go and live in Pembroke, or I live in East Bridgewater, I move to New Hampshire. Under the current bylaws that we have, there's nothing you can do about it. We can't do anything. No. So yeah. why not? It's what happens if someone moves halfway through a three-year term, a five-year term. Those are a, a lot can happen in those times. So what protections do we have as a town, as a board, to be able to make those corrections if someone is not willing to self-disclose the fact that they're no longer in town, especially if this other residency, general residency bylaw, uh, which is a, assuming is what this is about. Uh, it does get passed. All right. So well, we we can definitely um, add that you know to the um, articles here. Mm -hmm. So we just can't go into further discussion on that just because it's not on the agenda for tonight. So um, so Those are the points I had. All right. Okay. Great. So but it's just so we we'd have the bylaw on the residency requirement with our little proviso, and then you're saying maybe. A, rec a recall re really isn't the right name because they weren't ever elected right. into the position. But no, I would yeah. also argue yeah. that you could have a recall. I use the word recall because yeah. it's just what I yeah. have for removal. But I, removal. you might even want to have some, two. One for removal that gives the appoint, whatever the appointing authority. It doesn't matter who it is. It, it could be the town, the town moderator for the finance committee. It could be us for whatever. To have that removal authority built into the approval authority, because right now, once once they're in, they're in, and the, you're 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 for better or worse, and you just have your fingers crossed that's for better or worse. But what happens? What happens? Because this is, you're bringing up another point, which is something I was thinking about uh, the other day. What happens if a, a board appoints a, a body, right? But that it's so against the town that the you're taking the hands out of the citizens in general. They have the ability to recall an elected person, but they don't have the ability to recall right. in the best interest of the town. So maybe it might also be worth a placeholder or even the same thing uh, related to appointed yeah. bodies. So With cause or no? Does it, well, yeah. well, you have to do the wording. Well, you have to figure we, that yeah, out. Can we, can we do the work and then bring it to the next yeah. meeting of, yes. if you want to hash it out and then we can put it on the agenda just because I don't want to stray too well, far. Well, who are you saying? Well, yeah. 
to do the work. Joe, are you going to I don't know. So something? I guess my third point is, is that I don't, this is my, I've tried to put a couple of things on the warrant. This is the first time I've ever had the opportunity to do it. So I'm taking full advantage of it. I don't know how to actually plant anything on the warrant. So I'm just kind of throwing it out there now for the sake of it, because I don't know how else to do it. <laughs> so okay. let's what, get these what on you, there. What you want to do, uh, Mr. Weeks, is just be in touch yeah. with Ms. Greer um, yeah. and just say, this is what I would like to put on the draft and then it will appear and then if you when are, you know uh, the things that you would like to see mm -hmm. get put on the list I've heard from the others and then you all can discuss it and decide whether or not it's actually going to end up on the warrant mm -hmm. so so yep so, so just send uh, Greer an email and um, we'll go from there I like your thought process though so um, so with that being said, um, the moral of the story with citizens' petitions is just go to Beth. Go to Beth. Go <laughs> to Beth. Go to Jean. Yeah. Go to the clerk's office and make sure it's in the right format and to move forward. Um, so with that being said, uh, the next item um, is review amendment to host community agreement to allow marijuana delivery services at 15 Commercial Way. Miss Green. Yes. So um, our. Mr. Greenberg of Impressed LLC, we have a um, new community host agreement, a second amendment, um, that would basically, once they are um, awarded the license for delivery, would allow um, Impressed LLC to um, begin delivering process with um, to other businesses of their manufactured products. Um, and this just talks about that it does allow for the town to collect the sales tax that's allowed the 3% sales tax um, and basically that's that's about it just um, it, it's it's a very basic um, amendment to the to the main community host agreement mm -hmm. perfect um, so with that being said do I hear a motion so moved second moved and seconded uh, for discussion um, I just want to throw out there uh, mr. Greenberg um, had reached out to me and said hey come down and check out the facility so on my way home from work one day I did I just stopped by and he gave me the grand tour and yeah. he wanted me wanted me to make sure I extended it to the rest of the board um, to go check it out just send him an email give him a phone call um, to go check it out because what they're doing up there is really impressive and some of the upgrades that they had made too um, is really going above and beyond so um, and it's really cool to kind of see a new industry and a new industry here in the town of Hanson and learn how it's all going to work so definitely reach out to him he was asking um, for me just to pass that along to you guys so uh, any other further discussion moved and seconded moved and seconded all in favor it's uh, five oh all right um, so one thing that we kind of escaped from for a little bit uh, was to discuss the Board of Selectmen's uh, goals and objectives I know that at one point I want to kind of do just an open session and just kind of discuss them a little bit more in depth because I know when we get here on a Tuesday night we're kind of limited to conversation um, so with that being said summer's kind of winding down and September's approaching um, I was hoping to see if the board would really entertain the idea of maybe doing a half day, a half morning, maybe up at Camp Kiwani or even here um, to um, just kind of further discuss our goals and objectives. I'm, I'm totally on board with it. I love it. Would that be okay with you guys if we did like a half morning on a Saturday? Or, or I, I don't... Coffee I'll, I'll buy co coffee and donuts. The only one thing I just thought of, uh, Miss uh, Green, can we conduct town business on a Saturday? I was about to say that question. Yes. Oh, you can do it whenever. Uh, we'll yeah. Okay. Uh, I just I just wanted to make sure because I know on holidays you can't. Yeah. So no, I just wanted it. to make Remember sure. Remember when we were interviewing town administrator? Oh yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Great. You no, just have to post. I just was thinking, just over overthinking as usual. Um, so for me, it depends on the date. Exactly. I work half yeah. days on Saturdays. Okay. You know, so it just really depends on when it is. All right. Uh, is there a Saturday that works best? Uh, I can't answer that right now. I, I can certainly do it. All right. Yeah, I well. can answer you that. Know, it might be better to do a do it. That's a good idea. Your, yeah. Yeah. All right. What your availabilities are, and I'll let you all yeah. know. Perfect. Okay. So, I mean, I'm sort of hoping it could be like October, just because we've got, um, you know, Labor Day, all kinds of stuff in September, sure. and maybe 
when's our to when's town meeting? October the fourth. Yeah, yeah, maybe right after that. All maybe. right, so let's shoot for October yes, then. So can we yeah. shoot for October? Because then we'll know how we settled on the articles, right. and that might drive some of the goals. Yep, and, and then hopefully we're, yeah. we're good there. So with that being said, um, when that doodle goes out, Greer, can you also just kind of survey the board and see if there's any goals and objectives yes. that they would like to see? Sure, and then I'll bring that list in for distribution, for that'd discussion. Be, that'd be great. Absolutely. And I'll buy the coffee and donuts. So, uh, <laughs> so um, with that being said, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, next item is to discuss and set timeline for interim uh, town administrator review. Uh, Ms. Green and I actually discussed this uh, just a, a week ago or so. Um, and Ms. Green, do you want to just uh, um, summarize that conversation real quick? Um, well, we had talked about um, on my current contract, which is for one year, um, I have a probationary period that's going to be up on October in October on the 26th, um, possibly reviewing my performance up to that date um, to see if you like the job I'm doing, areas where I can improve, um, additional uh, duties and that you'd like me to work on, um, goals you'd like me to, to work on and accomplish, um, and just see where you want to go from there. If you want to keep my contract at a year or whatever the wish of the board is. Sure. I'm open to whatever you decide. Great. Um, so with that being said, you said about uh, the end of September, October, is your six months? Uh, yeah, October 26th would be the six months. So... Um, 30 days or so. Um, right. The contract, it says give me 60 days notice if you don't intend on um, renewing the contract. But um, again, it's mutual agreement by the board and myself of what direction we'd want, we want to take. All right, great. Um, so with that being said, um, with that being said, uh, I think what we had used in the past is a matrix of some sort uh, for the board to kind of fill a out rubric. independently, yeah. Yeah. a rubric. Um, yeah. And then we can send that, um, I'll say, to the, the chair. Let's send it to me, um, just because that way it doesn't put Ms. Getson into um, an awkward position of kind of, yeah. well, you know, an awkward no, that's, position. that's fine. I'll can just you, send you, you the formatting. Can you double check on that? But, yeah, I was just thinking. Double if, check on that, that because there was be a conflict meeting. of interest yeah. court case um, regarding um, this exact issue, um, regarding uh, a, a performance review, and to, I don't want you to end up ha violating open meeting right, law by getting the feedback from everybody and putting it together. That's going to put you right in the in the hot right. seat. How right. about this? I know you all sat down with Ms. Green in the beginning, and you each had your specific mm -hmm. goals you wanted um, her to attain. So if you sent me, you know your most important ones, I could compile them in a matrix, and then um, just you could review it before it goes in front of the board. Well, are we talking, so there's two pieces. Are we talking about, are we, are we talking about her goals or her performance? I know in talking about her performance, we will be setting goals, but I thought we were talking about her performance to date and then I think her goals would end up coming out of our goals, mm -hmm. which we won't be doing until October. Right. Um, and I, we could, we could definitely separate those two things. And I, I've done it when I've done reviews for people where I've talked about here's your performance to date. Okay. Do you agree? These are the, the behavioral things you need to work on, and then here's your goals. Okay, Mr. Weeks. So I'm thinking, I mean, this is the, it looks like this is the start of the conversation around that, and I'm curious what the performance measures are. I know we each have our own individual goals, but, you know, the boards change as new people come on, myself included. So, you know, the hiring board is different than the current mm -hmm. board. The goals are going to change. I'm curious if we have a conversation maybe next time about what are, you know, what, what are the parameters that we're judging? You know, what are we actually looking at? Um, you're saying it's October is your six-month mark. Yes. Coming right off the heels of our Saturday meeting, if we can do it before that, coincides with what you were just talking about, where we can figure out how to put together somewhat of a performance measure mm -hmm. so that it's objective and it's something that we can all kind of look at across the board and we actually know how we're measuring it. Otherwise, if we all just send it to Greer, we're just going to be sending a bunch of hodgepodge of what we think we're, we're evaluating on. And the other piece is, 
what are we evaluating <coughs> against? So, you know, what goals and objectives have been set from the get-go that are measurable to say w there has been progress towards this? Um, are we talking about punctuality? Are we talking about consistency? Are we talking about projects? Money's brought in. I don't even, I, honestly, to even do an evaluation right now, I wouldn't even know what to say. Right, right. So, well, yeah. and I think that's why in the past we've used this rubric is to kind of make sure that it's... There is a rubric that's got um, performance standards and then... Good place uh, to start that. Yeah, and then it would, it would measure. We had used it. I don't think we actually ever came to fruition with John Stanbrook's So that review. was my understanding. But, but yeah. we, had, we had filled them out, or at least I filled mine out, right? but, I, but I don't know whatever happened to that composite thing, and I think then the timing, Mr. Yeah. Stanbrook I, left. I could right. see exactly yeah. it to yeah. the board, the, you know, because it's, it's fairly standardized and it's fairly broadly written, and you all could maybe look at it and at the yeah. next meeting say, no, you know, strike this or add this or... Yeah, th I think, th I think that'd be great. That? Yeah. Um, but... I have a uh, question. Yes, Mr. Mitchell. Does, does your contract say we have to do your review 60 days before your six months, or what does it say about your review? Well, it, it basically just says um, the board needs to give me 60 days notice that you intend not to renew my contract. Right, so that would so, be that would be sixty days before the expiration, the expiration of your contract, of the contract. which right, would right. be next next June. Next right. June. Yes. So your your well, six actually, months shouldn't June. be up yet because you started June. No, actually, I started April twenty sixth, so it would be next April. So not next June, next April. Yeah. Right. So your six okay. months is October. It's your October. year is April. Right. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. And. Mr. Kenny, just to add to that, you may remember, uh, or may, you know, but when we negotiated with Lisa, it was after six months, um, we told her that we were going to give her a review. Yes, that, that I remember. Yeah, so that, and it's also written in the contract that um, it would be 60 days before the um, contract ends. Um, like in a standard contract, a standard three-year contract was... At the end of year two, you had to decide whether you were going to um, keep the uh, town administrator for another three years mm -hmm. or tell them to let them go. Lisa was Or tell on, them not to let them go. Tell them you're not going to renew their re contract, the contract one year before it expires. <laughs> right. And yep. Lisa, with the interim uh, in front of town, uh, in front of the town administrator, and that we gave her a abbreviated contract, everything is kind of fast-tracked on this one. Um, okay. And I don't think it would be fair to Lisa or to us if we wait until 60 days no. before her contract is up. No, no, no. Right. I'm not suggesting that. I just I thought that the six months was when she started from interim, not when she started. So that's where the confusion yeah. is. April to June. Right. That's all. And no, so I, that I, is yeah. Coming. You know, that's. I, I had asked to have this on the agenda because I really. I, I think that at this point, with the length of time Lisa's been with us, even if the, it wasn't in the contract, uh, we, she needs to hear from us on whether we think she's doing a good job so that if she, we think there are things she needs to improve on, she can work on them. And yeah. conversely, if there are things we really like about her, she can feel good about it because we may not all we, always be freely sharing those things. So, you know, I, I just thought it would be a good check-in, and yes, it does comply with the with the um yeah no contract. that's good yeah so i was just confused on the dates that's all yeah, yeah. so greer if you wouldn't mind um I'll just send it out. uh sending that rubric out and that way we can just kind of start the discussion okay. but uh, overall I, for me personally i've been very very pleased with miss green and i think we're very fortunate to have her so thank you um okay. so, so with that being said, moving on to discuss volunteer application and appointment procedures. Um, Ms. Kemet, you requested this to be on the agenda. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we, we are, um, I've gotten a little bit of feedback and I'm trying to be responsive. As you guys know, we always have an abundance of openings mm -hmm. and we don't always have people signing up for them. Um, so I just want to make sure that we have a policy and a procedure that when somebody applies for a, com a committee opening that we immediately acknowledge thank you for your um, you know for your application um, we will be taking it under advisement and then if to the extent that they're going to be coming before us which we did vote a while ago that we were always going to mm -hmm. have at least somebody one of us meet the person so we 
you know, can get a sense of who they are. Um, if, it can't, if they can't come before us, that they'd meet with Greer and, and Lisa probably. Um, and that, um, you know, and that then they're invited to meet with us. And then that we're following up and saying, okay, you've been appointed, now get sworn in. Um, and here's who your committee chair is. And here's how to connect. I just want to make sure that um, that we're hand-holding people and being super appreciative of anybody that's stepping up to be a volunteer. So I always acknowledge them. I reply and I say, thank you very much for your interest in volunteering in the town of Pansy. Yeah. And we will put these, this application before the board at a future date. I will get back in touch with you once I know what that date is to make sure that you are available. Okay. And we do send an appointment letter out and it, it's emphasizing that they need to go to get sworn in with the town clerk. During COVID, I supplied her information, phone number, and her email so that they could um, contact her to make an appointment to come into the building. Maybe that's where things Good. jumped the track a little bit or something, like during COVID, I don't know, but. No, um, I, I, I yeah. was sending it out because it was more specific, even it's not just stop by and see the town yeah. clerk with the next days. It's like you need to call her or email her first to arrange a time. Okay, yeah. all right, I'm glad to hear that. And then also, um, I did wanna just, can we just do a sanity check on the appointments that we're listing and just make sure that we do really do have openings in those committees? And maybe we even have more openings that we're not listing in the sure. committee openings. Um, and I know that this is a constantly moving and churning, you know, I, there's no way that on any given day it's going to be completely accurate, but just like if we could um, get it as accurate as possible, because sometimes I'm like, I don't think we've got an opening on that committee, but I can think of another, you know, opening we've got okay. just mentally in my mind. Sure. Um, sure. Okay, that's sure. great. Yeah, so, yeah, well, to kind of, one thing when that popped into my head when you were talking, uh, Ms. Kemet, was we have a volunteer handbook too, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. That may be something the town clerk gives out? Is yes, okay. it is. So yep. uh, yeah. one thing maybe that we should have on that volunteer and employment page as well mm -hmm. is maybe can we put that uh, booklet there saying, oh, are you interested in joining our team in Hanson? You know, here's the application, but also further your reading, and here's the that volunteer booklet. So, that's, so we could put a link to it. Yeah, I yeah. Think so that they don't great. submit it every time. They don't print the whole thing. Right, right. But we'll put a link. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think I think that might be good, just so that it's it's there. So. Yeah. And that would be one thing our new IT director will get ready to work on next week when he's Well, and that was another thing I was <laughs> going right. to ask is whether we could get our Facebook committee of Scott Davis, who's really <laughs> his committee of one, um, or and or our IT person to start. Um, putting out, um, you know, notices about the openings that we've got and just, you know, and I, and we've talked about this historically in the past, we've talked about it, but, um, you know, in saying little things like, hey, are you a history buff? Do you have a little time on your hands? We have an opening on the Historic Commission. You know, um, are you interested in, you know, preserving wetlands and, you know, um, and, you know, unique species? Hey, we've got an opening on our Conservation Commission. Like, trying to sell it a little bit because, it, and also talking about the time commitment, because I think what happens is people go, I don't have, I don't even have a minute to myself. Uh, you know, there's no way I can sign up for these committees. But what they don't realize is, like, say, it's like Historic Commission. They meet once a month for two hours on a random Wednesday night, you know, third Wednesday of every, of every month, you know, I think when you boil it down to that, people go, oh, I could, I could do that, okay. Mm -hmm. I have wanted to give back, but I didn't know what the time commitment was. Um, Mr. Chair, there's um, somebody in the I didn't want to recognize him because it's not my place. Mr. Travis. Tarvis. Tarvis, sorry. Uh, do you mind just coming to the podium just because the microphone doesn't work in the middle anymore? Thank you. Do you mind just stating your name and address? It's uh, Kurt Michael Tarvis II, 491 East Washington Street. Um, yeah, and one thing, too, in regards to what you were talking about, um, there's very little information on the town's website about what each board does. Some of them, there's no links, there's no information at all, no meetings, times, minutes that haven't been put in from their meetings in four or five years. Yep. Uh, that's something I did just want to bring to everybody's attention that, um, you know, like I serve on the uh, uh, cemetery commission I was elected. Obviously, that doesn't, there's nothing to do on that commission much unless you go out on your own. Um, but I recently submitted um, an application for another uh, appointment, and 
Um, there's just no information online about it at all, nothing. It's almost as if it doesn't yeah. exist. Yep. It's just there in name only. And that is something that I think if there was more information available, you may actually get more volunteers. People would be interested if they knew what a board was about. That's uh -huh. why I'm saying this, because I honestly think we're not doing ourselves any favors. Like, we bemoan the fact that we're, you know, Mr. Weeks and before him, me, every week we're reading all these things, but we're not doing anything to really help the situation. And, and in my estimation, it's, it's if we can get more people on these boards and committees, it's more engaged citizens. And God knows we need more engaged citizens. We need more people to care about what's going on, to step up. And we're all not gonna be here for the rest of our lives. We need to be getting people that are ready to serve as select board members. We need people to be in other elected positions. And we just need to have informed citizens. And the only way we do that is if we put the information out there and it's readily accessible for people who, like you, might be, you know, tooling around on the website, you're curious what this, you know, commission or this board does or how does this all relate, you know, that type of thing. And I, I just think we've got a, a lot of work to do on that. So, so maybe this is something for our summit in October. I think so. Uh, to but put there's on some there. quick hits that we no, can do. Also now yeah. with the, this Thank new you. IT director coming on board, he's full time. You mm -hmm. know, we are not trained in IT. Yeah. I play around trying to figure out how to put things up. I got five minutes or less of training. But if we get now with a website coordinator, I think Lisa has thoughts about, okay, you know, pulling information mm -hmm. in so that you can talk about the duties, et cetera, and then maybe talk about when they meet it and so forth and really beef up the website with a, a right. dedicated website coordinator. Right. We're, we're going to have a dedicated IT person yeah. who's... He, he's Hanson's, he's ours, so we will see improvements on our website and our Facebook page, so we'll see a lot of improve, improvements in the next few months as he really dives into all of the issues that we need to be brought up to speed. And Mr. Chair, I would yes. like to clarify that this is no criticism of Ms. Getson or Ms. Green. This is an inherited and historical issue. Um, so I just want to clarify sure, on that. You know it, but yeah. you know, now we're, we're, we're going to work to improve yeah. it. Yeah, that's... Great. They'll, they'll have the time to get it done. Yeah. Perfect. We're yeah. going to work on that. So, um, all right. So, with that being said, we'll add that to our discussions on how to attract more volunteers in October. Um, the next item on the on the list is accept July donations. So we had one donation for the amount of twenty five dollars to Elder Affairs. Um, with gratitude, Miss Cahill. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor. Uh, five zero. All right. Uh, one day liquor licenses. Um, w there will no. From this point on, there will be no more Retro. retroactive uh, liquor licenses. Um, if you have a baby shower coming up or a wedding coming up, uh, make sure that these are approved ahead of time. Uh, last time for that. Uh, so with that being said, uh, do I hear a? Um, yep. Motion. So, so moved. And may I say, I was relatively Second. excited to see this, to see that kind of activity up at Camp Kiwani. That was wildly exciting. UMass Medical? Mm -hmm. Actually, I, um, I took a, a trip up to Camp Kiwani on Thursday morning, um, that rainy morning, to, to see everything. Um, and it was, it was really quite remarkable. Yeah. Um, there were 206 medical students there, um, and I guess sophomores and then some freshmen and the upper class puts this orientation on for the um, incoming freshmen and they were such a great bunch they made the best of the weather uh, they played playing games um, having great conversation within the lodge it was really a lot of great activity it was a they, and they had a really really nice time and they plan on coming back um, they, they liked everything that went on in the service that they got so much that they plan on if they plan on having it be an annual thing, which That's is awesome. great for the town. Yeah. Um, so yes, very very well uh, run orientation that they had. Excellent, uh, Mr. Mitchell. So I just want to make sure we're clear on what you said regarding the licenses. Yep. So no more moving no more forward. I'm not no, move, moving no. forward. No more retro. Too many liquor licenses. No. Nope. And less. right. It's ahead of time. Right. Like. Doesn't matter if the Pope is coming. No, nope. I think we did say that maybe two meetings ago or so. Right. Not even two meetings ago. Oh, last meeting. Okay. Right. Right. That was one of my concerns. <laughs> so the last minute. I, I spoke, but I understand this. I'm not going to get into it. Yep, I understand yep. this was a, a different situation. But moving forward, 
I'm not interested. You guys can. I'm not interested no, in approving. No, um, I spoke. I spoke with Miss Green and the, our police chief about this, and it, moving forward, this just cannot be happening. Yeah. Okay. Um, good. So, Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm gonna reel that in. Yep. So, um, with that being said, um, moving on to old business, uh, Miss Green. Actually, yes. Yeah, oh, so there's one additional liquor license, but it is for August 12th. So. Well, you moved and seconded all yeah, of them. Okay. So. Yeah, oh, all of them. I'm sorry. So, uh, all in favor? Five, five oh. So, all right, um, thank you. Moving on to old business, uh, follow up on a mass housing grant. Um, a couple of meetings ago, uh, Ms. Kemet had mentioned about um, possibly a housing grant, um, and our town administrator, Ms. Green, had followed up on that and looked into that, and she's reporting back to um, what her findings were or where we are with that. Uh, so actually, the grant that Mass Housing Partners offers, uh, it, they're, they're technical assistance type of grants, and um, the grant mainly is to provide uh, engineering services for, as technical assistance to municipalities that are going through the 40B process. Um, it, as far as the uh, zoning process and then the, like, like the uh, Board of Selectmen and municipality process. Um, but when I had approached the um, Z, the Zoning Board of Appeals, the administrative assistant, she had informed me that they had already had a civil engineer who was on the staff already that was overseeing all of this. So uh, they declined going forward with the grant because they just felt that two civil, civil engineers would probably not be beneficial um, to the town. Can we get the, I just want to clarify. Mm -hmm. Why are we allowing the ZBA to decide whether the board, we voted to move forward with the Mass Housing Partnership um, grant. Why are we allowing the ZBA to decide whether we're going to move forward with that or not? Because there's information on the application that they need to fill out. So I had to go to them to get the information. And that's when they say, well, we already have a civil engineer. We don't need two. Um, they felt that it would only confuse issues bringing on two civil engineers. But you applying, you were applying for a grant, right? Right. Right. To so bring who's on who's paying the guy they have? The town. The so, town. But you were applying for a grant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Well, I, I guess I guess the, the town um, there were, there's an escrow that was put in by the applicant to pay for the engineer. So the town is, is the the applicant is actually paying for the engineering services. Um, right, but is the, the so I went to the hearing where their right. engineer, uh, you know, where the engineer stood up and oh. talked about it. Um, I don't see it as competing engineering. I see it as we're asking for a deeper dive on environmental engineering questions. That was specifically what we're concerned with. Their engineer only takes it to a certain level. Um, and we're the, the applicant is paying for it. But in this case, this is really advocacy for the town and the abutters that's being paid for by the grant. Mm -hmm. So I don't see them as mutually exclusive. Um, I see them as slightly different lenses. And um, with all due respect, I don't really care what the ZBA okay. thinks about this grant. We're the elected board. Uh, we've got abutters who are coming to us with concerns. We're trying to be responsive to those concerns. And the ZBA can do their thing as they have been appointed to do and continue to do what they're doing. But what we're trying to do is bring in additional resources to help us work through some of those concerns about the environmental contamination and the stormwater management. Those were the two main things that we wanted somebody to take a sanity check on. Okay. I can certainly continue with the application and, and approach the board and just say, the Board of Selectmen wants me to continue with the grant, so can you please provide me with this information? And then I will yep. submit it, because it's not a competitive grant. I, I was Mickey? just going to ask that, Lisa. We go through a lot of stuff, and sometimes it's hard to remember everything. Yeah. But I thought you said last week or the week before that it was not a competitive no. grant. Right. No. We apply for it, we get it. Right. We're not taking orders from any board. This is the board that runs the town. Yeah. Could I just can I just add Mr. one Weeks, thing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just really quick. And this just as a precedent. I mean, the the results might end up being the same. You go with the people that the ZBA are using, and that's fine. I'm okay with that. I just want to say as a precedent moving forward that the decision lies. I don't care whether it's two, one, fifty, whoever it is. We sh we need to be the one making the decision mm -hmm. on what that is. And as you know, as our our 
our representative authority, I would just, I personally, obviously through you, Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. Uh, we just make that recommendation moving forward that those recommendations come to us for the decision um, And they they would wait on us to give them the okay or not on on where to go moving forward And again, the, the answer might be exactly the same But I just I, I want the flow of communication to go in a very specific direction And, that, and that's why I wanted to give an update on that to get your feedback on everything so I can go back to them and say No, this is what the board wants Please provide me with the information so I can submit this. Yeah, and I, and I'm I, I apologize that I was short with you, Lisa. I nope, really am okay. like nope. threw you to the ZBA type of thing. <laughs> so I I'm, I'm sorry that I like you know kind of lit into you. It, it, I I it was, it, it, I was my Irish got up. That's all I'm going <laughs> to no, say on that. And, and I would just and, and it, this will be the last thing for me. It's just um, it, it really just comes back to. Uh, and I, uh, you're caught in the middle at this point, it's, and, and I get that. It's it's really just a matter of I, I like the the clear flow of communication to go in a very specific direction, um, and I, I just I do also want to say out loud that just like we don't have all the information that they have, they too don't have all the information that we have. Mm -hmm. So having a, a mediator kind of talk with, with only having half of it to me doesn't make sense. So where we we where we should be the board that has all the information before making a decision like this. It really should come through us and mm -hmm. respectfully you know I think everyone did what they thought was in the best interest of whatever it was they were deciding but I do think it should come to us as a as the decision-making uh, any further discussion from the board nope all right so I think we're all uh, I, I think we got our direction so we'll make it happen thank you miss green um, so with that being said approve open session meeting minutes for March 12th of uh, 2020 September 22nd of 2020, um, uh, November 17th, 2020, December tw uh, 8th, 2020, um, January 12th, 2021, and March 23rd, 2021. Um, any moved? I, I cannot vote on them. I don't have access to Dropbox, and they weren't. I sent you a zip file um, last week. I, I think. Was it last week? I did week? not yeah. get I, yeah. I, 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 maybe it got filtered out or Laura, something. Laura, I, I had problems yeah. getting on. Yeah. And yeah. what I found is the 21 stuff is in the 20 folder. No, I literally can't even get into Dropbox. It's oh, giving you me like a, you you okay. can't get in. We're we're over the number of people that can be in. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. so uh, one, I, second. Moved and second. Um, just to go back to that, if you have a, a computer for whatever reason on Dropbox, um, it's mobile devices it limits you to. So if you have a laptop or a desktop computer. I've tried it on my laptop. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you receive um, Ms. Green's zip file of all the, uh, she also sent one out previously that had all of the documents that yeah. were in Dropbox. Yeah. No, it's not coming to you. Huh. Okay. It, it could it be in your I'll have spam? to check my junk file. Yeah. Maybe it got filtered out or maybe it's too big. I don't know, you know, how big of a file it was, but. If you guys, you know, it's fine. If you've got enough does to a, vote, go ahead. I does just the board feel you know. uh, comfortable moving forward with approving minutes tonight? I have to abstain, but I also have a question about this point of order-ish. Sure. I just don't know. Tell me if it's not appropriate, but um, where these minutes are so far behind, we're approving minutes from 312.20 as well as 320.321. Open meeting law and related laws state, and I understand COVID, so that might just be the explanation, but... Um, I, I, as a new member of the board, I haven't approved a single thing of minutes from anything that I've been a part of, and I can tell you right now, I am going to have no memory of what we did back in May, let alone a year ago, over a year Those ago. Those are prepared from uh, the cable TV, the actual I'm very videos. sure. I'm very yeah. sure it is, but my, my point is, and I'm glad that we have the Zoom, and I'm sure that someone is taking notes, and I've been trying to piece it together myself what the process is, so my, my question is really two parts, procedurally. A, just so I can formally know why are these so far behind and who's doing it? And then second, related to open meeting law, and they talk about having a reasonable amount of time before you have to certify these minutes. What are we considering to be reasonable? Because I, so as we, a sitting- we resolve this. Um, the again, problem I'm, is- so Can we just hold finish? On, hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, what? All right. Uh, I'll so I'll, I'll address this. So yes, our minutes did get behind. You know, at the time we had a new town administrator, a uh, new administrative assistant, and then a global pandemic came along Everything was turned upside down, Mr. Weeks. And um, we have addressed it. You know, we talked about this last week with the auditor, with the minutes, and we had hired um, a minutes clerk to take, take care of them. And now we're catching up, and that's what we're doing. 
Um, I don't think it's appropriate to say, you know, why are we doing this and, you know, calm down condescending in the sense that we are um, in public session. Um, so, but what I'm saying is this. We are addressing these, and I understand that you're concerned about why are we so far behind, but we have resolved this issue. We hired a minutes clerk, and we're addressing them as we are, and we're trying to catch up as fast as we possibly can. Mr. Chair, Mr. Weeks is correct, that, and, and our auditor did mention it two weeks ago or last week, I don't know, it's all a blur, um, that it is a violation of open, open meeting law. You know, I wasn't even trying to go down no, that road. No, no, but they are supposed to be produced on a more timely basis, and, um, and I think that um, you know, the auditor pointed it out, there was an awareness, and we are, we are working very diligently. I have to say Lisa has really been, um, you know, has gotten resources behind it to catch up. But I am wondering, um, going forward, um, Mr. Chair, um, that it seems to me as though we are gonna come at a serendipitous juncture at some point where we will have some old, but we will start producing the new ones, and we may need to break that out um, so that Mr. Weeks is able to approve those minutes sure. that he in was involved in? Yeah, and, so yeah. if I can actually finish my sentence. I started off by saying, if it's not appropriate, please tell me. So there's no condescension at all. I'm actually just trying to know procedurally as the first, as the newest member of the board. Second thing is, I don't want to be in a position in which 12 months from now, the current minutes, which are being taken in live, we're, that we're not, we're not taking that seriously as well. I, there's no reason why we can't do these things. It has nothing to do with condescension. It's, it hasn't been explained to me. I'm just yeah. curious. <laughs> I just want to know the answer. And I have no problem having these conversations, but I do call and I don't get responses. I don't have another venue to get these answers. So I'm just asking. It's as simple as that. It's, there's no condescension at all. It's, it's an operational matter. Procedure. And in the future, please call me directly. I can explain it to you. Absolutely, I would have been more than happy. Or come on in and see me, or see Lisa. Uh, but to, may I try, not to beat a dead horse, because this snake is just about beaten into a pulp and ready for the glue factory, but um, I, I'm um, wondering, um, what are we doing about the more recent minutes? Because, uh, because you know, to Joe, I, yep, I, look, yep, yep, I, I have trouble. You know, we cover so much territory yeah, every we, meeting. We it's have so some, hard. So yeah, we have some current ones that are on the agenda for the twenty fourth. Okay. I did not have an opportunity to review them because they don't always put everything in, and I like to tighten them up and make sure they are correct. Okay, that's good to know. I didn't even know you were sets. seeing them, so that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I make sure that they're correct. So. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. So we have a motion moved and seconded. All in favor, say aye. So three, um, object. Well, I'm not objecting, I'm just, abstain. and I'm not abstain. technically, I'm, I guess I'm abstaining. Okay, yeah. so three, zero, two. Okay. Pick one more. Thank you. Huh? Let's say pick one. <laughs> I don't know. All right, um, moving on, a town administrator's report. Yes, Mr. Chair, Vice Chair, members of the board. Um, so first I'd like to just um, mentioned our um, the Olympics, US uh, women's soccer team, and our newest sisters from Hanson um, took the bronze. So congratulations to, the, to them. Um, Cranberry Cove, uh, we realize that there is a heat oh, wave I'm, coming up. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, to that point, Mr. Chair, the Mew sisters. Um, oh, did I skip over is that? that on there? I don't know, I know I asked for it, but uh, but she uh, mentioned it anyway, so we can kind of glom on to that, I think. Sure. Um, um, so, um, uh, Lisa, bef um, I had asked to have the Muse sisters put on the agenda, or I think Mr. Weeks had asked before, too. Um, and I know Mr. – we've talked about it anyway as a board, but we've never really um, consolidated our thoughts on what we would do, and I'm hoping – I, we don't have to do this tonight, but I'm just hoping we can talk about it and maybe get some input from the community sure, on so things that they think we could do for a celebration. But we did briefly talk to um, Audrey Flanagan because she was here from the 200th anyway, and she said that they were trying to get in touch with the Muse sisters through the 200th anniversary and would very much like to do something with them. And again, nothing has been consolidated. There's no you know, clear path forward, uh, but it's kind of you know, it's out there anyway being thought of. Yeah, I mean, it might be tough to, to round up the family. Um, I understand one of them lives ab abroad, um, and then the other sister is down in H Houston. 
so they're they're not close by and in um, the uh, uh, parents have moved out of Hanson so it ho hopefully they'll be able to just um, get everybody together collectively um, at one point or or just do some uh, something quick for them um, I don't know but uh, but busy schedules these two ladies have okay thank uh, you sorry about that so we went to that and um, so Cranberry Cove unfortunately we have um, still have a sand wasp problem there um, I realize there is a heat wave coming um, but we still cannot have people on the beach. Um, there's information out there about these sand wasps. Um, we are uh, trying to deal with it um, organically using tarps. Um, and But <laughs> the problem was they were only covering half the beach, which meant these sand wasps were moving to the other half of the beach where they had their free movement. So um, the staff at Camp Kiwani are going to get some additional tarps and cover the rest of the beach. Um, unfortunately it's it's a problem we just we can't solve overnight and the problem is they dig into the sand so when you have people walking on the beach with bare feet mm -hmm. and your foot digs in and you hit one of these they will sting you or if you hit two of them they will sting you uh, they're not an aggressive so to speak however if they're disturbed they will sting and our main concern is people having an allergic reaction um, not everybody knows that they have a reaction towards bees or wasps and they find out when they're bit um, and we don't have a hospital within five minutes um, so we've got some serious health you know we don't want to see a resident get hurt or anybody else for that matter so we're being very very strict I did talk to the police chief to let him know the beach is still closed unfortunately we understand it's going to be 90 degrees but we still cannot take the chance with these bees on the on the, the sand um, and, and Ms. Green, the, this was at the suggestion of the Plymouth County Extension entomologist, well, actually, Lake Denius, right? I, think I he um, did a lot of research and, and, and learned about the tarps, and then I did run it by the Plymouth County, and they yes. said, yeah, that's a good idea, because their only other option was to bring in a, an exterminator, and what you have to do is they have to literally put powder in each individual hole. They can't spread it across the sand. It doesn't work. They have to put it in each, and there's thousands of holes. So cost-wise, um, organic, there's no, there's no chemicals going into the water. Uh, Industrial-sized tarps, if they try and chew through, it's going to take them, I think, a lot longer than their lifespan to try and chew through those. It cuts off their ability to fly around and collect food, which is what they need to do. So this is the best approach to it. Otherwise, we wait for them to go away. Who knows how long that could be. Um, and one good thing, if, if they come back next year, we have these tarps to throw up on the beach and, and get them right from the get-go um, and hopefully not have the beach be closed. Um, Ms. Green, um, talking about cooling centers with the heat wave this week, yes. um, uh, do you know if the library... I yes. do, and I, I have time. So for cooling centers um, for these next few days, um, our COA, uh, Council on Aging, will be open Wednesday through Friday from 8.30 in the morning till 3.30 in the afternoon. Uh, the library will be open Wednesday and Thursday from 12 to 8, and on Friday, 9 to 5, and on Saturday, 9 to 1. Um, they, so those two centers will be open for, cool, for cooling. I did share um, that out on Facebook. Uh, Mr. Chair, because uh, I had reached out to Ms. Green earlier, okay. uh, but I'm hoping we could update our town website also to say that. Sure. We'll do that first thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we are taking care of that, and the, the, the fire chief is working as well to keep our eyes out on, on our elderly and uh, population. Um, circling back on our auditor report from last week, they had mentioned some policies they would like to see put in place. Um, I did reach out to our town accountant and treasurer collector. We do have draft uh, fraud prevention policy and a cash and investment policy. We have drafts of those already. Um, we also, I also um, have reached out to our highway director and he is working on a time card and punch policy as we speak. So we are addressing those three policies um, that the auditors would like to see put in place. Um, and to give you an update on our town planner search. Um, unfortunately, the person that we offered the job to um, withdrew her candidacy. Wow. And unfortunately, we had no, no one else. So we're back to the drawing board on that. We're going to be meeting uh, next Tuesday with Old Colony Planning Council uh, to see if they can provide us with any type of resources or suggestions on where we go. 
Um, it's not an easy position to fill. Unfortunately, a lot of towns around us are also looking for town planners. So I don't know if it was a salary issue or unfortunately um, the, the candidate did not give me a reason uh, why they were not going to take the position. Um, so that's where we are with that. And um, it, I had the... I had the privilege of having um, a lunch over at our Council on Aging on Thursday and met with a lot of the wonderful ladies there that volunteer their time um, to keep that, that center up and running. Um, they're, both, they're all firecrackers. Um, it, it was just a fun time to meet all the ladies. Um, one was actually amazed at how tall I was. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're, they're a great bunch over there. Um, we are so fortunate to have a wonderful um, director, Mary yes. Collins, yes. and her, her volunteer staff. Um, they're dedicated people, and uh, we're very lucky to have them in the town of Hanson. And I, I'm very, very honored that they, they invited me to meet everybody, and um, I look forward to working with them in the future. And that'll do it for my report. Um, that was that was great that you went there, Mr. Chair. I just had yes. a couple of questions I wanted yep. to. Um, the, um, where are we on the audit? Our 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 T Whitman Hanson audit that has jumped the track 50 million times, and I literally can't keep track of where we are. So um, actually, there, there there are two things. Um, so as far as the audit. Um, Whitman is also looking into for where Hanson is. But where we are uh, working on the deregionalization study, um, TMS team is working with John Stanbrook and, and Jeff Simonak to gather many, many documents. So we didn't feel um, that we wanted to put more pressure on top of that, where they do have the school year fast approaching. Um, so we have the people that we do have the um, bid from the people, and we do have the funding in place. So it's just a matter of letting them get the school year going and then approaching John Stanbrook and Jeff Simonak with the documents that we'll need for the auditors. Okay, um, and so Whitman's got the money. Yes. And, and, and I assume you've talked to Lincoln and yes. you guys are on the same page. The same and page, so it's yes. just a matter of trying to manage uh, the priorities and, um, and the resources because obviously we can only prevail upon them so much. I mean, you can't. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, okay. and the deregionalization study is, is looking for a, a voluminous amount of documents. So okay. we didn't feel it would be fair to put this on top of that. And they're trying to get the school year open with the new challenges of the Delta variant that's out there, um, which also would lead into my next um, piece of information. So COVID numbers in the town of Hanson, mm -hmm. we currently have less than 10, 10 cases in the town of Hanson. So we're doing very well right now. Um, and let's hope that they stay that way. If people stay vigilant, um, get vaccinated, um, hopefully we can see that stay below 10. Um, what percent are we vaccinated? The town, I don't know the answer to that question on the town, but the Commonwealth, I believe, is almost 68% okay. vaccinated for the Commonwealth in general. <clears throat> All right, thank you. And oh, I'm, I'm sorry, just, so just one other thing. Um, if, the, if the audit is connected to the deregionalization study, or like timing-wise, resources and all. What's our ETA on, on sort of not necessarily the study itself, but on getting what we need from the school so that we can then move on to getting what we need from them for the audit? So um, the uh, TMS hopes to have a report for us by mid-September. Um, they started back in early July working with the schools to get the documents that they, uh, they were looking for. Um, so hopefully they're approaching the end of that process, and we'll have that, and then we can we can sick the auditors on them. Okay, awesome. Thank after you. that. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Green. The next item on the report is uh, committee reports. Uh, Mr. Weeks. I don't have any reports. All right. Ms. Kemet. I don't have any other than Lisa. I think we've got to queue up a um, next meeting for that McQuan School reuse. Yes. Um, um, but other than that, no updates from our last meeting. Uh, for myself, um, Energy Committee met last week. Um, we are working on community aggregation, um, and I think that there'll be something before the board by the maybe next meeting. Um, just to kind of see whether or not we want to go in that direction or not. Uh, Plymouth County Hospital, uh, we have met um, and we're still still working in that direction. Uh, Mr. Mitchell. 
And nothing important, Mr. Chairman. All right, uh, Mr. Hickey. Um, as far as the 200th anniversary committee, um, I've mentioned in the past that October 2nd is going to be something big. Right now, I'm not at liberty to say what it is. Uh, so it's not, the carnival. Carnival. it's not the carnival we just approved? Yeah, it's the carnival. <laughs> the suspense is killing me. Yeah, it really is. I had you, Joe. You, be you better deliver. You really. Yeah, that's it. Chair, uh, Ms. Green. if yep. I could just um, make a note, because um, we haven't talked about it in a little while, and I just want to remind everybody of our upcoming um, Halloween-themed car, classic car show on October 10th, the Sunday before Columbus Day. Um, that, that is all coming together, although we're still we're having a little trouble getting some food trucks, but uh, I believe we are. But just want to remind everybody, it's fast approaching, and um, people are really looking forward to it this year. Hopefully COVID doesn't put a damper on it or the weather, but um, we do have a rain date, actually. It would, be, it would be the 17th if, if we needed to push it back. It's uh, outdoors, so hopefully even if, you know, COVID, people can wear masks and exactly. be outdoors. Yes. And, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, with that being sec uh, said, uh, we will be adjourning uh, in executive session not to return to open session. Um, so do I hear a motion to enter executive uh, session to discuss Senate. strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open session uh, may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body, and the chair so declares to wit the highway union. Also, to dis, uh, discuss stra uh, strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation to an op if an open body may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or the litigation position of the public body, so the char uh, chair so uh, declares uh, 751 Main Street. Uh, this will be uh, moved. Second. Second. Uh, roll call vote. Mr. Weeks? Aye. Uh, Aye. Ms. Kemet? Aye. Matt? Aye. Aye. Mr. Mitchell? Aye. Mr. Hickey? Perfect. Uh, we are now in executive session. Thank you.